Well, good morning. We want to welcome you out to Five Minutes or More. I am your host, Pastor Timothy Gore. It is a Friday uh, this morning. It is June the 10th, 2022, and we welcome you to this moment this morning. Now, it is the end of the week, and uh, as I've said on many occasions out here on my porch, we are in the wild, and so uh, there's a lot going on in my community today. Several people have already started the cars and drove off, and so you may today hear some door slamming or dog barking or something like that, but that's okay. Uh, we are out, and we are here to give God some glory and praise this morning, and so good morning, Brother Donnie. Great to see you this morning. I want to ask you, how did you wake up this morning? What were the first thoughts on your mind? Were, were they on praise? Were they on thankfulness for what God has given you? I, I talk a lot about this, but our mindset can really dictate the way our days go. And oftentimes we find ourselves, not intentionally, but we, we tend to complain about a lot of things going on within our life. And I'm going to give you an example. Brother Donnie will be able to validate this, but just last night sitting with them and we were talking and uh, I have plantar's fasciitis. It is a pretty painful thing in my foot. And I complained about that for some time yesterday, should not have, but I did, didn't realize this until uh, Miss Melinda spoke up and she said, well, she's an amputee. And she said, I wish I had a foot to hurt like that. And all of a sudden it struck me how blessed I really am. You see, oftentimes we don't think about that even in our difficulty, even in our pain, uh, we have a great life. We are blessed by God, and even though there are some things going wrong, if we'll just stop, if we'll just think about it, we'll realize just how blessed we are. I gave her a hug after she told me that, and I said, thank you for getting my mindset straight. Thank you for helping me realize how blessed I actually am. And when we begin to do that, when we begin, good morning, Miss Jamie, great to see you this morning. When we begin to realize how blessed we are. It goes back to that little saying, I complained about having no shoes until I met someone with no feet. We are blessed this morning. We've got air in our lungs. We are living today. This is a gift that many people across this world were not given this morning. They won't wake up this morning. We have, and so we are so incredibly blessed this morning. So I, I wanna take a minute. Here's your reading for today, Proverbs chapter 14 and 15, and then Romans chapter 14. They're great reading as the book of Proverbs continues to give us insight on life and practical information. Paul talks a little bit about not judging others, but making sure that we look at ourselves and make sure that we're right with God. But this morning, I wanted to take us for a moment into a time of worship. I think we need to see the Lord this morning. As I look around me, as I look within me, I see the devil was working overtime. He is working in mighty and powerful ways in this world. I think he's taken the gloves off. I think he has gotten serious about this whole thing, uh, and he realizes that his time is short. Folks, listen, I don't think it's going to get much better. I think you're going to see the devil working in a lot of ways in our world today in powerful ways. And so I believe that we've got to recenter ourselves on God. We've got to recenter ourselves on the God of our lives who stands at the throne and be able to worship him today. So I'm going to draw your attention today to Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm going to read that to you this morning. Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, here Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. He was sitting upon his throne. Notice that. He was sitting upon his throne high and lifted up in his train filled the temple above him stood seraphim each one had six wings with two they covered their face with two they covered their feet and with two they did fly and he says one cried to another holy 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 is the lord god almighty the whole earth it says is filled with his glory <laughs> And the posts of the door were moved, and the voice of the Lord cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am a man that is undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among the people of unclean lips as well, and I have seen the king. Then flew one of the seraphim over to me, having a live coal within his hand. He lifted me up, and he took and placed them upon my mouth, and he touched them. And he says, your iniquity has been taken away. Verse 8 says, and I heard a voice cry, who will go for me? Isaiah says, send me, Lord, 
send me. What a beautiful worship experience. You see, I want you to understand that Isaiah in chapter 6, things had gone very wrong. Uzziah had died. He was a godly king. He had led the nation of Israel to turn back to God. But as soon as he died, the people turned back to the false gods and the pagan gods for which they were worshiping. And Isaiah, being a prophet of God, realized his whole life had just turned upside down. Everything was going wrong. Maybe Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe things have turned upside down. Maybe things aren't going the way you would want them to go. Maybe it just seems like everything is just spinning in chaos in your life today. Can I tell you Isaiah's life was that way? It was in a minute of crisis. It was in a minute where things were falling apart within his life. But look what it says in chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, but I saw the Lord. Listen, we need to see God this morning. We need to get a vision of God in our minds. We need to understand that our circumstances are swirling around us, but the one thing that we must focus our eyes on is the God of the universe. And look, it says here, he was seated on the throne. Let me tell you something, my friend. That throne's not empty this morning. Because your difficulties are happening, because your crisis is going on within your life, God has not gotten up and left the throne. He's not pacing back and forth, wringing his hands. He is not worried about what's going wrong. My friend, he still sits on the throne. He is in total control of your life. He's in total control of your circumstances. He knew what would happen this week in your life before it ever happened. He is in the past, the present, and the future. He's already planned for your answer. It's an already done deal. You just need to trust him. And so God is on the throne. He saw God and he saw him on the throne. He's being worshiped. These angels are going around him and they're worshiping him day and night. Can I tell you, my friend, there's never a moment that God is not praised. Even the, the creation the Bible says around us is glorifying God. What about you? Are you glorifying God? Are you praising him on the throne? Are you realizing he is in authority and power of your life today? Oh, the Bible says that when Isaiah realized the holiness of God, he fell at his feet as if he were dead. Oh, I'm telling you, it's the same response that John had in the book of Revelation. When we come into the presence of God, we realize our own sinfulness. But the Bible says that this angel came, lifted him up, touched his lips, and brought cleansing to his life. Oh, I tell you, my friend, we serve a good and faithful God that will clean us up and send us out. He goes on and says, and who will go for me. Let me give you three quick things from that passage to take with you today. As he worshiped God, as we this morning worship God, I don't want you to think about anything else in this minute, but God is on the throne. There he is being worshiped. I want you to see that with the eyes of your heart this morning. It's going to bring you peace. Oh, you're going to see that God, my friend, is on the throne. Everything may be going wrong in your life, but my God is on the throne. He is in charge. He is in control. Oh, it gives us peace today within our life. You can have the peace that passes understanding. You can have that peace that only God can give in your life. It also is going to give you power. When we worship God this morning for who he is, for being on that throne, it's going to give you power. It says, and he lifted Isaiah up. Can I tell you, God's going to lift you up today. He's going to carry you through some stuff. He's going to have you right in the palm of his hand. He's going to give you the strength that you need. I know you're tired. I know you're weak. I know you feel like you can't go on, but God's going to pick you up. He's going to carry you. You're going to feel his strength in your life even now, and he's going to get you through this day. Oh, it's going to give you peace. It's going to give you power. Oh, thirdly, it's going to give you purpose. He said, who will go for me? This is one of the only times that God, God actually asked a question in scripture. Who's going to go for me? Here's what I think God's saying here. He's saying, Isaiah, it's bigger than you. He didn't sit there and focus on Isaiah and his little pity party and maybe the things that Isaiah had that was going wrong. He didn't sit there and pat Isaiah on the hand. No, he immediately first lifts him up, gives him the courage, gives him the power, and then he sends him out to do his work. It's bigger than you. Whatever your problem is, whatever you're going through, my friend, God's purpose is bigger than that. We've got to get busy for him. Let him handle your needs. Hand him the concerns of your life. Hand him everything that we're facing today. It is not your job to fix your problems. Can I tell you that? We seem to think that it is. We've got to figure out a way. We've got to come up with a way that we can fix everything in our life. It's not yours to fix. It's not your job to do that. It's God's. It 
it is our job to trust him. So can we worship him today? Can we see him on the throne today? Can we take peace and power from that? And can we say, now, God, let me focus on what you're doing in the world. Let me focus on the lost people today. We cry over broken hangnails when people are going to hell all around us. Let us get up and do God's work and let God handle our needs today. He's got them. He's got them in the palm of his hand. He's going to handle them and we can trust him today because he is still on the throne. Let's join Isaiah this morning in a moment of worship today. Father God, we come before you and you're on the throne. Those angels are worshiping you and you are glorious this morning. Father, we praise you for who you are. We praise you for the power that you have. We praise you for knowing that you've already got every need in our life met. It's already been done. It's already sealed. You see the future like you do right now. Father, we know you've already taken taking control of it. So, Father, today our job, our purpose is to trust you. So, Father, we do. We lay all our needs before you, trusting, God, that you're going to handle everyone. Give us peace, Lord, that passes understanding. And, Father, give us purpose. Let us rise up and do your bidding. Let us rise up and proclaim, Lord, your love. Let us be praising you all the day long. Father, thank you for the peace you give. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for sitting on that throne the way that you do. Thank you that we can trust you today. We worship you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Let us join the angels in singing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I pray today that you feel refreshed. I pray today you've had a chance to recenter and realize that in the midst of all the stuff that's going on, God is still on that throne. He is still right there. The same thing Isaiah saw is the same thing that's happening right now in heaven. Join those angels today. Sing his glory and tell the world that we got a God that can meet our needs. And have I told you lately that I love you because I do.